Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 beta 2 released to developers today. This was a bit of a surprise as it was a late release after 4 p.m. Eastern time and we had releases earlier in the day. This released along iPad OS 17 beta 2, watch OS 10 beta 2, Mac OS 14 beta 2, TV OS 14 beta 2, and our very first vision OS beta one. Earlier in the day, we had iOS 16.5 and much more. I have separate videos on that already. This particular update came in at 1.44 gigabytes. That's on the iPhone 14 pro max. And it was about the same size on all the devices here, one to two gigabytes or so. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go up to general, then about, and you can see the build number is 21A5268H. And this particular build brings some new features and changes. And then we have additional details about Apple beta software updates and Apple's developer program as well right here. Now this particular update brings new features, but the first thing it brings is a new modem update. If you're on a 14 pro or 14 pro max, it's been updated from 2.02.00-1 to 2.04.00. So that hopefully will help with some connectivity overall and maybe just make it a little bit more stable. As far as new features, well, the first thing has to do with software updates itself. You may have already noticed that it looks a little bit different. We now have update now, update tonight, and again, it gives more information about the Apple beta program and developer program as well. So you have that option. And also if you don't have a data connection, there's an error that it gives you. So let me show you that. If you were to turn on airplane mode or just lose your connection, you'll see at the bottom, it says unable to download at this time. This update requires a Wi-Fi, 3G or faster network connection to download. So that's just a new icon or message that shows up. Now, as far as the wallpaper is concerned, live wallpaper seems to be working for quite a few people. If we go into our wallpaper here and go over to a live wallpaper, while it doesn't seem to work for me really well, it is working for some people. It's easily selectable and seems to be fixed for a lot of people. When it comes to air dropping, there's a change there as well. Now we do have a new feature called nearby share that we've seen that Apple's advertised and they said it's coming later this year. If we go into photos and maybe share this one in particular, we go into airdrop. You'll see here that it says my devices, people nearby, and it says don't see people nearby. Try holding the top of this iPhone near another iPhone. So you'd bring it, be able to bring it over and then easily share it with airdrop or name drop, which is the new feature on our home screen. If we slide over and we go to add a new widget, if we go into our widgets, scroll to the bottom and we go to clock. Under clock, we have a new style here. It's a transparent clock. So it's hard to see that here, but I've already added it to the home screen and you'll see that on the next page here. So you can see the background through it. And as I move it around, you can see that it changes. So if I bring it up here or over to here, the background changes as it's slightly transparent. If we add another widget under music, we have some new size options. So if we slide over, you'll see listening activity hasn't changed, but when we go to recommendations, we have a smaller widget option. And also if we go over to top charts, we have a couple smaller widget options. When activating Siri using the power sleep wake button, the haptic feedback seems to have changed for some from two short taps of the phone to one longer tap of the phone. This actually reverted back to two short taps though, after using this for about an hour. So it may have changed for you. Let me know in the comments below. Also, when you go to send a message, it will now allow you to select the app to use from within the Siri menu. So let's go ahead and try that. Send a message. And you'll see here at the top, we have a button. We can tap this and select Telegram, Gmail, WhatsApp, or messages. And of course it's writing out what I'm saying here. So we'll cancel that. One of the new features of iOS 17 is standby. If we go into settings and then standby, we have some new menu options. So if we go into settings here on iOS 17 beta one on the left, beta two is on the right. You'll see, we have a new notifications option. We also have a new night mode menu instead of it just being a switch. If we go into the menu, we have night mode and then motion to wake. So those are some new options they've added, which help you better customize that as it was a little bit unclear how it activated before. If we go over into the health app and then we go to browse and then we go to mental well-being, the new state of mind has been updated here. So if you go into state of mind, the overall look seems a little different. And then we have a little calendar in the upper right that allows us to track our mood over the different days. So you can see that here, 
go into the day and it shows you different moods that you've actually placed there. When you go into messages for the first time, now it's cleared for me, but I took a screenshot. You'll see here that it says talk instead of type. It's a little tip that it puts at the top of messages that says quickly send a message with Siri. For example, say Siri with the word Hey in front of it and then tell same I'm running late. And then you'll see there same is actually one of the names of my groups here. So it's just suggesting how you would actually do that. Now, if we go into settings under settings, if we go back into accessibility under accessibility, if we go to touch, then we go down to haptic touch. We now have a new option. We have fast default and slow before we just had fast and slow. So you can feel what that's like. There's fast, there's default, and then there's slow. So they're helping it be a little bit more customizable and maybe a little bit more like 3d touch. Now within the phone app, they've updated something as well. This is a little bit more difficult to show as it has a bunch of recent contacts and more, but if you go into phone and then you go to recent, there's more of a space between each one of them when you're looking at your contacts. Also the new live voicemail feature has a little bit of an update as well. So let me call myself here and it now says waiting as you're waiting for it actually to respond with voicemail in the new live mode where it types out what the other person is saying. So you'll see it's now typing that out for me in real time. So it's still a little bit buggy, but it's been great for me and I've used this multiple times now. Music has been updated with settings a little bit in that if we go into our settings, go down to music with iOS 17 beta one, Apple added crossfade for music. This is something many of us have wanted for a long time, but once enabled while it would work when you were playing song, sometimes it would actually crash the settings app and you couldn't get back in. That's been resolved. And there's also a slider to change the duration of the crossfade from one to 12 seconds. So you can adjust this for whatever works for you. You can turn it off turn it back on and it's now working as you would expect. So that's great news and it works really well. And something that we've wanted for a very long time is finally here. If we go into settings, under settings, if we tap our little option here to go to our tabs, you'll see at the bottom, we have a new icon for our profiles. So we have personal and then our different tabs. We also have profile down here where we can switch between work and home. So that's something they've updated where it looks a little bit different than it did before. So on beta one, if we go to the same tab button, it looks different than that. So that's been slightly updated. It's easier to get into, get into your profiles. Apple has updated the podcast app. And the first time you open it, you'll get a splash screen. I took a screenshot of it where it says improved playback controls new up next design and connect to your subscriptions. It says get podcasts from Apple music, Apple news, and top apps. If we go over and then go into podcasts with beta one on the left, beta two on the right, you'll see that we actually have a little playback status here for up next, where it just shows the information. If we go into up next, you also have the same status indicators here. Also, we have a new icon under library at the bottom. So they're slowly making changes to this and it's always nice to get updates to podcasts. However, I find myself going back and forth between overcast and Apple podcasts. Let me know which podcast app you use. If you listen to them in the comments below, if we go into settings and then we go down to privacy and security, then we go to location services under location services, go all the way to system services. There's actually a new option here for micro location. So that's something new that they've added. Maybe it's just a more refined update of where you actually are within inches or some difference there, but we don't have any more information about that. If we go into the shortcuts app, then go to automations, go to new automation, and then scroll down to where it says transaction. This has been updated. You'll see on the left, it looks pretty traditional as far as a shortcut goes, but on the right, we have new icons for payment, transit, access, and identity. Now, as far as the release notes, let's go over into the feedback app here. And within the release notes for iOS 17 beta two, we have over 20 resolved issues. However, many known issues still remain. Also, there's some new features and you'll see here it says update includes spatial introduced trigonometry function for spatial angle type. And some of this probably relates to the new vision OS with Apple vision pro. So as we scroll through, there's a lot of known issues still with airplay 
AirPods has some new features with adaptive audio and some updates there that I've shown in other videos. There's known issues for AirPods as well. So still many different issues in this update. However, some of the things seem to have been resolved. So as far as stickers are concerned, I wasn't able to get stickers to work properly. So if we go into messages in messages with beta two, the stickers actually work for me. So if we go into stickers, you'll see I've created one here already and I can just add it and then send it, or I can create another. And you'll see here, it says add new sticker. This is my Mac studio. If we add it, it created the studio in the sticker options, and then we can add the effect to it. Cosmic shiny outline hit done, and then we can just select it and then post and send it. So stickers are working flawlessly for me. Now we're in beta one. They would just hang and never really work properly. However, the live wallpaper issue is still here for me. So if we go into live wallpapers, it doesn't seem to work for me. I can set them a little bit better, but they just don't seem to animate. I know some people have said this is actually fixed, but I haven't been able to get this to work properly. If we go back into our wallpaper, we already have, if I scroll down, you'll see notifications look okay, but then they're a little bit glitchy again. As I scroll up, Apple still has not fixed this issue. So the notification bug is still there. It's not a huge deal, but something they definitely should fix is it's been there with iOS 16 as well. As far as the overall performance of iOS 17 beta two, well, you've seen it throughout this video. It seems to be pretty fast. And as far as even doing the stickers here, it works really well. Promotion is really fast. Scrolling through different apps, opening apps is fast. And I really haven't had many issues here. If we maybe drop the volume here, we'll play a song and then swipe home. It goes smoothly into the dynamic Island and I really have no issues. Maybe there's an occasional frame rate hiccup, but this is still an early beta. As far as the heat of the device, it's much better so far with beta two than beta one. It's barely warm to the touch and it's working much better. So that's great news as my battery was suffering pretty badly as many of you that have been following along have seen. Now, if you're wondering how my battery is right now, that's not great, but let's take a look. Beta one has been pretty brutal. You'll see I'm down to 92% maximum capacity as I've had to charge this so much and my device has been so warm. If we go over to the last 10 days today, I've only had five hours and 25 minutes of screen on time, which is still better than I usually have. And I've used about 70% of my battery, but yesterday I only had two hours and 43 minutes of screen on time and used well over 75, maybe 80 or 90% of my battery. So it's much, much better now. So just today alone, I'm getting five hours or five and a half hours. Two days ago, I only got three hours. So it seems to be much, much better. As far as if you should install iOS 17 beta two, well, if you're wanting to use it on your main device, I probably wouldn't do that. Apple said the public beta will typically be out in July. That's what they've said. They could release it around the time of beta three, which would probably be within a couple weeks at this point. So Typically that's what I would expect within two weeks. We'll usually see beta three and usually the first public beta will be out of iOS 17. Also Apple released iOS 16.5.1 today. And then also we're waiting for iOS 16.6 beta four or RC that could be as soon as tomorrow. Many thought it could be today. So all of those things we're waiting for. And then of course the public release is available probably in September, usually prior to the next iPhone launch. So when iPhone 15 releases, usually the week before, They'll release that and then we'll have our final iOS 16 update before iOS 17. They'll still continue to probably push out iOS 16 as far as security updates, unless they change their mind and do something different. But either way, lots of updates today, and we should expect that in just a few months, but I'm looking forward to finding more and more features in iOS 17 beta two. Now, for those of you still tracking benchmarks, let's just go ahead and run that since we ran it with beta one. Let's go ahead and run it here. The benchmarks completed and they're much better than what we have with iOS 16.5.1. Unfortunately, I don't have any of the benchmark numbers from beta one of iOS 17, but if we compare those with 14 pro maxes, this is actually just a photo from the other phone where I ran that earlier today. You'll see single core is higher at 2,626 and multi-core is much higher at 6,644. I think the overall performance shows that as it feels very 
smooth and just very fast to use overall. Now, as far as other new features, well, if I find anything significant, of course, I'll have a follow-up video with more features. And if I find anything separate in iPad OS, I'll be sure to talk about that as well. Let me know if you've found anything in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.